It's 5.30. It's time to call the meeting to order. Would you please stand as we recite the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Commissioners, first uh, <clears throat> on the agenda, the adoption, the adoption of the agenda. Have you both had a chance to to look at the agenda? Do you have any modifications? I have. I have no modifications. I reviewed the agenda and have no additions either. So uh, I entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. I move that we <clears throat> adopt the agenda as presented. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Item number two, appointments. Uh, park board, there is one unexpired term due to a resignation. The applications will remain open until December 1st of 2021. So uh, those of you that are interested in applying, uh, you still have time to get that application in. And I encourage you to do so if you're interested or if this is the first time uh, uh, bringing yourself forward to serve on a board, this would be a great opportunity for you to uh, gain some valuable experience. So um, it's open till December 1st, 2021. I might note that we already have the three maximum that live outside the city on that board, so this appointment must be inside the city limits. All right, thank you, Kelly. <clears throat> uh, item number three. <clears throat> the consent agenda. Uh, do I have a, a motion to accept the content to approve and, and accept the consent agenda? Excuse me. I move we accept <clears throat> the consent agenda as presented. Do I have a second? <clears throat> second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you, gentlemen. <clears throat> Item four public hearings. Item number A, public hearing for considering condemnation of 801 East Bird Street as dangerous and unsafe. David. Mayor, uh, this house was involved in a structure fire and uh, it had then switched hands and is now under new ownership. It is a rental. Uh, it has completed uh, repairs uh, inside and it has passed HQS inspection uh, by the code enforcement officer Aaron Musgrove if you remember right uh, when this happened there was a fence around it there were car parts cars yes. a lot of different trash and different things like that uh, but it has passed the HQS uh, I will note that you know HQS doesn't always say the outsides have to be painted and all that, but all of the living standards inside are met, windows work, electrical, plumbing, everything is to standard uh, to allow this to come off of condemnation. All right, great. Great, I'm glad they moved forward on that and just the fact that it was cleaned up, it was pretty much an eyesore and had been for, for yes. a good length of time. So hopefully uh, she'll be able to get uh, stable renters in there. It is already rented. Okay, good, good. Yeah. Keep the property up, and yes. uh, then maybe somewhere down the road in the spring she'll be looking at maybe Further doing some cosmetic work, work on yes. the outside of the property. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, commissioners, any questions for Dave? I have none. <clears throat> I have none. Then I entertain a motion on this. <clears throat> Excuse me. I move to adopt a resolution rescinding a previous resolution which set a date, a hearing date to consider condemnation of 801 East Birch Street. I second the motion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Moving along. Um, item five. Items for commission action. Uh, item A, consider proclaiming the week of November 15th through November 21st, 2021, as National Apprentice Week. <clears throat> that This was requested by uh, Kansas Works, and I don't know if they have a representative here or not. It doesn't look like it, but they have requested that this be um, proclaimed. 
Okay. This is basically um, encouraging people to follow a, a different path uh, as far as an apprenticeship to learn uh, on job skills to where they can um, secure uh, better paying jobs. Y yes, this is what they sent us. Mm -hmm. uh, they sent us the language for that. Okay. It's a good program. Um, I know where I was uh, formerly working at, uh, we were always hiring apprentices to learn the trade of being a lineman or, or substation work or whatever uh, to get them trained properly so we would have people coming up to fill the vacancies as these occurred. So this is a good chance for uh, those that are interested in that type of work. They can learn a trade and, and really make some good money. So that's good. So um, with that, uh, I uh, need a motion on this. <clears throat> I move to proclaim November 15th through 21st, 2021 as National Apprenticeship Week. Do I have a second? I'll second the motion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Item B. This is uh, something that was tabled from the last meeting. It is considered a request from Joshua Anderson to exceed the sewer cost share maximum for property located at 415 Westminster. <clears throat> Mayor, uh, from our last meeting, uh, you know, you guys have, I think, done your own little research. We've done some. Uh, I did speak to Mr. Anderson uh, on, was it Monday, Kelly? I believe he feels he has explained his position well enough right. therefore he didn't feel it would do any good for him to come here tonight he asked me just to contact him tomorrow or Friday with whatever you guys decide and what options are but he had nothing further to add to the discussion from the previous meeting okay all right thank you David Commissioners, what's your uh, take on this? We have a uh, recommendation here that's presented to us by the uh, city staff. Well, we don't have a formal uh, resolution or a modification of our grant application to allow or to set a standard to add it to the uh, the taxes, the property taxes. So I, I don't feel comfortable proceeding with that, although I support that revision to our, uh, our grant program to allow that option uh, from the discussion last week. Um, Mr. Anderson, or the last commission meeting, Mr. Anderson uh, felt like he couldn't sign it, so to proceed with an approval to do that and not having really the format laid out in writing at this time I I would just honor the grant that was given to him and I noticed that in the the information that what he received from his plumber was just a an estimate so at this time for us to approve an amount we're not sure if what we would approve would even be sufficient or is it more than enough? I, th I think that's something we need to consider in how we word that, uh, that portion to our grant program. But, um, and, and again, I feel to just go ahead and award the money without having some program like was presented by the city manager of adding it to the, the property tax assessment that we can't we can't uh, set a standard that this will be the norm I think it, it's hard to be fair with an approach of individually reviewing each request and making a decision on that we need to have a format and a plan for that's consistent with every applicant and uh, back to what was presented by the city manager that is consistent with every applicant so you know 
you know, my opinion is the grant was awarded for four thousand dollars and staff needs to go ahead and, and make recommendations to modify the grant program in in the manner to allow assessment if the property owner so decides and with that we do not take any further action based on the the way the motion is written here the proposed motion is written here uh, it uh, suggests that a process is in place for the assessment uh, am I incorrect in assuming that there is a process in place for assessing this two property taxes uh, for the next 10 years at an interest rate of 4% is there a process in place for that well there's a, a sewer agreement or our cost share agreement that the city attorney prepared to allow that the actual sewer cost share program just states that the Commission may consider an amount above the maximum and it doesn't state how that would be paid so if the cost comes in above this particular um, I guess the the language here allows for the cost to be at or above the four thousand uh, dollar grant maximum uh, and whatever that value over the grant maximum is would be then the portion that would be um, assessed and repaid yes so that uh, it we're not really tied to this estimate in any way uh, per this motion correct are we tied to the estimate no no um, my heart goes out to the homeowner and this way and that is that until this is uh, fully funded nothing uh, can really be done because it won't be completed uh, so uh, I don't know what fully funded means but I think giving the opportunity to have it fully funded with no out-of-pocket expenses instantaneously but be prorated over this period of time seems like a very lenient way to approach this and uh, and uh, does give people who are in a financial hardship of this nature the opportunity at least to agree uh, with the loan amount I, I don't know what this loan amount would be because we don't know what the final cost would be but offering this homeowner this option seems like uh, a rational approach and it's my understanding that you intend to formalize this approach mm -hmm. for future applicants uh, in the city am yes I, am I that would correct? be our intention if the Commission wished to approve that when we bring it back your intention is to bring it to the City Commission to formalize this approach uh, and uh, the sewer is another in aging infrastructure many of the homes are approaching a hundred years in age and so are their sewer systems and other infrastructure improvements so um, unless you push back in such a way that uh, that you would see see well because you've structured this motion in the way that you have it, I'm assuming that you are ready to deploy it upon our if, if it were to pass this evening yes if the property owners are willing to sign the agreement so it's still dependent upon the property owners accepting it yes it's an agreement between the city and the property owner and Jeff are there any concerns you're aware of because it doesn't state specifically in the policy how the additional would be paid if they exceeded the maximum <clears throat> well this policy just says up to four thousand and then it says this amount can be exceeded with approval of the city commission I think the concern from staff was there's a lot of sewer work coming up in the near future and we could be looking at multiple applicants that might want to exceed this stated maximum and the city would can't just fund it all 100 percent so the city was looking at a way to recoup anything in excess of 4,000 but at the same time make it affordable spread it out over 10 years there's no state law or ordinance right now that says that we can do that so we would have to have the consent of the landowner to do it so that's why that document was drawn 
And I think that's where we should approve the document before we start administering an attempt at a project like that. That the, the wording, it's, it's just bad business to come up with an agreement that we're gonna do something with nothing in writing. You just don't, you don't do that in the business world, whether it, you know, I think we can all agree it's a great idea, but the policy, which policies are part of the commission's responsibility, action should be taken to adopt that policy prior to allowing an individual to participate in it. And, you know, we do have a, if, if it's a rush, we've got a commission meeting next week that that could be added to the agenda, a special meeting. So, you know, the thing is, we've got to go in an order that we have, have policies adopted and in place before we start allowing them to be administered. That is not, uh, pardon me, were you done? Yeah, for now. Okay, that documentation that uh, the Commissioner Flish is uh, asking for is not in this packet. Is that correct? It's not in the uh, packet for today's meeting. The I believe he's talking about document. the sewer cost share program, right? No, I'm talking, about the loan. I'm talking about the loan document. Oh, or yeah, the... I, I sent out a second uh, packet probably 15 minutes after the first one that included that sewer cost share agreement. Okay. For tonight's meeting? Yes. Well, I didn't get a second packet. Okay, it was sent out Friday. I got one packet Friday. You know, I, I think this is a so, document you, which was obviously going to bring up that you were referring to. Yes. Where it says on um, item number two, additional cost about uh, uh, citizen to repay the above stated by allowing the city to assess the additional costs against the citizen's property over 10 years bearing interest at 4% annum. Yes. So this is the document that we need to look at. That, that's the document we were referring to. I apologize. I, I okay. realized after I sent the first packet out on Friday that that wasn't in there, so I resent it out probably about 15 minutes later. Hmm. Okay. I'm, uh, Do you have this document, Dean? <coughs> Let me look. <clears throat> and I actually put a note that I'd missed it and put the page number that it was located okay. on. I have uh, reopened uh, the agenda center and gone to the HTML view and opened the attachment uh, for this line item. And was this was this document available at the last meeting? Because I didn't um, I didn't print anything I, off, and it was in my I'm in not my sure folder from the last it. meeting. <clears throat> did we? I can't remember. I, did, I didn't if we print did it off, and I I looked for it. I think I emailed it, it to there. you before the meeting because we got it after the packets went out. Okay. And it's the same agreement. Okay. Sorry for the confusion. Well, we didn't. It's not noted as we were going to take action on that, so that makes it a little harder to follow through. I had. Okay. I only I, got I one. I only got one okay. packet. <clears throat> <clears throat> so you know if if this is what we're going to do, so we got a meeting the seventeenth. Then let's Bring it act down. on. You know, it's it just again not sure. good business to be handed a policy at a commission meeting and expect to act on it without review. Okay. Again, so, I thought I sent it out on Friday, yeah. so I, I didn't realize you didn't have no, it. No, <laughs> I didn't realize I didn't either have it because I didn't. I just got one packet, so. I had trouble locating it as well until just a moment ago, so uh, it's not unique to uh, Commissioner Kaflish. Uh, so the wonder of I would like I would like time to review that uh, myself. So if we could um, table this table again. it until mm -hmm. our next meeting uh, sure. next okay. week, that would be uh, appropriate. So we'll need a motion to move it to the agenda for next week. Yeah, I would just suggest you just table it. And oh, okay. We'll put it on the next one. Okay. We will table item um, B for now, and it will be on the agenda for our next meeting, which is the <clears throat> is that seven, 17th. 
Uh, the 18th. 18th of November, okay. I second the motion. All right, all, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried, thank you. Uh, item C, consider authorizing a request for proposals for stormwater infrastructure investigation at Central Park. John, how are you this evening? Doing wonderful, how are you doing tonight? Good. Um, <clears throat> In doing the engineering work for uh, the new Central Park complex, uh, one of the things that was found in field investigation is there are several areas where the existing storm sewer is apparently visible at the surface level. Uh, the, the storm sewer is very old. Um, it, it apparently, in some cases, consists of a concrete floor and a concrete top with brick sides. So it's, and it's actually, you know, person sized. A person can walk through in many areas. So it's a very significant structure, um, and we have, to my knowledge, very little documentation on it. So in order to do this project, uh, working through Central Park, to come across uh, and find our storm sewer in the middle of construction would be uh, a very, very, very difficult thing and would lead towards a tremendous amount of cost. So our, our consultant brought forward the, the, the idea that let's go through, investigate and map uh, our storm sewer as well as know what our condition is uh, so that we understand where it is, uh, what elevation it's at, and so that, you know, because it might be some simple design tweaks can design everything around the existing storm sewer and, and we're fine. And we'll also have a good look um, uh, at, at how the system itself is holding together and functioning. So that's the, the, the concept behind this. You know, in looking at that there, uh, and reading some of the little notes uh, on the, the drawing there, some of them we weren't sure, um, they weren't mapped at all, is that correct? What's that? And some of those weren't mapped at all. They were just, you know where there was right. the, the beginning and it went somewhere it, those are kind of guesses, assuming it's yeah. a straight line, and yeah. So yeah, you're, you're, yeah, because you really don't know for sure. You you know where it begins, but you're not sure. Yes. What path it follows, and and it, you're assuming it ends up at this point, but uh, no one really knows. And, and in and in many cases, uh, you know, uh, these uh, these lines can dogleg to pick up other areas that we just don't know. Okay. So that would be a good time not only to identify. Uh, where they actually connect at, but map them and then determine uh, if they can be worked around or if somewhere down the road, some of those are to the point where they, they need significant replacement, then we can we have, have it identified and we can market what uh, we may need to do to bring that up to standards and then exactly. put, to, uh, put together a plan to uh, rebuild those, especially if they're 100 plus years old now. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they've serve their purpose yeah, and this is an area that uh, traditionally has flooded in the yes. past so I mean there's uh, there's a whole lot tied into that so yes yes All right. commissioners do you have questions for John <coughs> is this going to be with PEC or trans systems uh, PEC is the engineer that is working for uh, Indigo, mm -hmm. the, the park architect. So this is with a PEC uh, drafted the RFP. Now uh, Trans Systems would be involved uh, to the extent that they are actually also working with Indigo on part of the design work as well. So when we met um, all four, you know, both the city, uh, Trans Systems, PEC, and Indigo were all involved at the meeting you know, sharing information. So it's all going to come under the same uh, primary consultant, Indigo Design? Yes. Okay, so we don't have to worry about coordination no. between an outside consultant and them. Good. Yeah, we have had some problems in the recent past with some of the brick uh, storm drains. I think there was one right off of Cottonwood that had collapsed mm -hmm. and then one on Birch street also uh, the sides had caved in and uh, then the top cave way it was a sidewalk on top so the investigation and in, is definitely worth the money that we can control a problem instead of react to a problem yes and, and you know 
going a little bit further, you know, this will kind of form the basis to understand what flood control in that area looks like for the future. Most of the flooding on Penn Avenue at the railroad uh, trestle is from backup, isn't it, instead of runoff? Or is, I, I, will that be determined? I, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. and, and again, this is kind of that, that first step. And it very well could be that we are getting backflow, even uh, backflow from the Ritigris back up to that area. Because sometimes it, in a heavy downpour, it'll cross the street. This might be something to make sure that it's covered, that the investigation does review the uh, flash flooding that will occur, that if we can increase the size of the line coming out, that we can reduce or eliminate the chance of flooding on Penn Avenue. Because mm -hmm. sometimes, doesn't it, David, flood there before it backs up? Yeah, I mean, Penn Avenue at the underpass often floods under very heavy rain. Uh, it just doesn't have the inlet capacity to take it all in. So you get it, you get the initial flash flood, drains, and then then the secondary is as the retention fills, it back flows mm -hmm. back through the system. But usually, fairly quickly, the retention can clear it out. But yes, you are correct. So. Now, as we look at the storm drainage, analyze the inlet capacities even along uh, Parkhurst. Yes. Just to make sure if we're going to have to to replace due to condition that we increase the size if necessary, that we handle all our issues. John, are there, are there other areas? I know uh, 20th and Sycamore, that's another issue where that's tile line, brick mm -hmm. line, that, that's under consideration at some point in time to, to uh, improve that bottleneck there. And then I know we're clearing out uh, debris and brush along Whiskey Creek, moving uh, yes. up toward uh, Laurel and then further up uh, the road. So um, are there other potential areas that maybe we, we haven't looked at that we need to look at? Uh, yes, I, actually downtown is potentially one of those areas. Okay. Uh, one uh, it has been reported by uh, more than one citizen in different areas that some of the storm sewer uh, may be inadequate and may uh, be having some backflow in and around uh, the uh, Penn and Main. Okay. So, I mean, and that, that's obviously very significant, and if we can, uh, obviously we don't want to rip up Penn or Maine, but uh, it, to the extent that we could find something downstream that's causing the, the bottleneck, that would, yeah, there, there's, there, there's, a, there's more out there. Okay. So is that something that we'll, um, in the near future, look at that to identify those problem areas and uh, for the long term to look at some of the solutions to either eliminate a bottleneck or make improvements to those areas? Uh, absolutely. And, and that's one of the, again, longer term is probably the best way to put that because mm -hmm. it will take some time to develop because, you know, our, our sewer and our water, we have great information on, but when it comes to our storm sewer, it's um, much less information. Okay. All right. Commissioner Hayes. <clears throat> Seems like a good idea to me. I'm ready to make the motion. All right, let's move forward. Make the motion, Commissioner Hayes. I move to authorize the request for proposed proposal for stormwater and infrastructure investigation at Central Park. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, item D, consider authorizing the Independence Housing Authority's purchase of Phase 2, Pheasant <laughs> Point Edition, approximately 5.91 acres from USD 446. <coughs> April, how are you this evening? I'm good, <clears throat> Sorry about that. Um, the Independence Housing Authority has uh, 
settled on an agreement with the USD446 to purchase some acreage for additional housing development. Since the housing authority cannot own our own property, the city has to hold it in the city's name. We're asking for permission to do so. This is at, it's adjacent to the Pheasant Point Apartments. I, I think initially they were looking at building another phase of the apartments on this property. Yes, Pheasant and, Point was. Yes. And then they sold the property to USD 446 for the potential of a bus barn. Mm -hmm. And now USD 446 does not need the land, so they have agreed to sell it to the Housing Authority for housing development. Okay. That is great. It's hard to find. Uh, parcels of land of any size in Independence now to where you can put in a subdivision of homes. So um, this worked out well in the long run. I know they wanted a bus barn, but this has uh, a better use of the property by uh, being able to put homes in that area. I, I think it's a great location for future development. We're close to the schools. Um, we're close to you know children be able to get to any school through that location, so, um, yeah. I thought the price was reasonable too, roughly six acres, 2,000 an acre. Yes, and you know, the appreciation goes to USD 446 for the understanding of um, the purpose of what we're wishing to do with it. Mm -hmm. um, they were very reasonable in their amount that they asked for, okay. I think they were hoping to be made whole on what their expenses were and appreciated the city and the housing authority's efforts in identifying housing needs in the community. So it was a, it's a good partnership. Yes, yes, I agree. Uh, commissioners, do you have any uh, remarks or questions for April? I have no <coughs> questions. April, I like the uh, idea that you have uh, collaborated closely with the city and the, and the school district on this. I think it's a win-win. I agree. All right, um, April, thank you very much. With thank that, you. I entertain a motion on this, gentlemen. <clears throat> Excuse me. I move to authorize the mayor to sign the real estate sales agreement for the Independence Housing Authority to purchase approximately 5.91 acres from USD 446 in the amount of $12,000. I second the motion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. <clears throat> thank you, gentlemen. Um, <laughs> Item E, consider awarding design contracts to Trans Systems for a design of the sleep of the Sea Clip projects. John again. Yes, uh, uh, fortunately we were awarded those uh, two projects: uh, the project at Penn uh, from Morningside to the city limits, as well as uh, Chestnut from near Penn Avenue to Ninth Street. So uh, we're looking at beginning the engineering on that work. Uh, it's probable that we won't be bidding that until. Uh, June, July, depending on, on how KDOT has this programmed. So um, this is the th this is the step to award the engineering. And I, I will note that I do have uh, the suggested motions. I have, at least on my copy, a uh, typographical error that would have been my, my error, uh, showing that um, both motions should be for to approve the award for engineering services. Oh, okay. <clears throat> And that's, that's my error. I apologize. Thank you for pointing yeah. that out, John. <clears throat> okay. Gentlemen, do you have any questions for John? I have none. <clears throat> I have no questions. All right. Then I, enter, uh, I entertain a motion on this. Please. Motion one, I move to approve <clears throat> award, award for engineering services for the KDOT C-Clip Pavement <clears throat> Restoration Program Project Penn Avenue from Morningside Drive to North City Limits to Trans Systems for the amount of $139,000. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Motion two I have. <clears throat> I move to approve the award for engineering services of KDOT C Clip Sur uh, Surface Pre Preservation Program for Chestnut Avenue from near Penn Avenue to 9th Street to Trans Systems for the amount of $55,000. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 
Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Uh, moving <coughs> along, item F, consider selecting a representative from the commission to participate on the zoo master plan steering committee. <coughs> <clears throat> and me. this is something I, I think we talked about previously when you selected the consultant, but we need uh, a commissioner representative, and then we would also request that you set a special commission meeting for November 30th at 530 that the full commission can um, weigh in on the uh, plan. Scott, how are you? Good, how are you good? guys doing? Good. <clears throat> PGAV Architects, which is the firm that the city has contracted to develop the master plan for Ralph Mitchell Zoo, has requested that the City of Independence form a steering committee, which will be responsible for making decisions regarding the plan's development. The steering committee currently includes five members of the city leadership team, one representative of Four Paws, one representative of Park Board. We request that one member of the commission volunteer to serve on the steering committee. All right, Scott. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Gentlemen, with, with that, um, I would like to volunteer for that. I would second that motion, Mr. Mayor. All right. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you, gentlemen. And then we need to set up um, a special meeting for November the 30th at 530 um, in regards to the Zoo Master Plan yes. Steering Committee. Yes. So do I, uh, that's the motion I'm gonna make. Do I have a second on that? Second. <clears throat> All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. <clears throat> Item six, reports. Um, Treasurer's quarterly financial statement for a quarter ending September 30, 2021. Uh, and then we also have a sales tax report. Uh, gentlemen, do you have questions for Lacey on the quarterly financial statement? And or the sales tax report for October 2021? The uh, treasurer's <coughs> statement, um, you have a couple, well, there's three line items that are shown in deficit. The KPW SLF project line 10. Um, what project is that? That is, that is the water treatment plant project. Uh, and, and that WTP. Design, yes, that design <laughs> services is, is what we are. Um, we have not requested a disbursement from that loan. So you're waiting for reimbursement? Yes. Okay. And then the next one is on um, the street capital projects reserve. Mm -hmm. um, that is pending um, a transfer from the mostly special use sales tax of, um, of cash balance of street allocations. Um, you'll see in our next meeting, uh, we have scheduled to bring to you all the proposed amended budget, taking that um, cash balance of street, the street quarter percent from special use sales tax to move it to the specific project reserve fund so that it's easier to see what dollars are, are there for streets. So um, we've just, instead of recording it in the sales tax um, fund, we've recorded it here so that it's more apparent um, what, what the dollars are being spent for. Um, and that transfer, I think, is scheduled for eight hundred twenty-five or seventy-five thousand dollars. So it'll more than cover the current deficit. It's just a timing okay. difference. And the uh, fund twenty-three. That same is same thing. Um, yes, that's a, a loan that we have not um, requested a distribution from. And I can okay. look up which loan. I'm not sure if it's the water line or the sewer line, but it is one of those. My report's not working for me on here, but it's okay. it's the loan C, C20-2043. So that would be 
the Southeast Lift Station loan. So that's design services for, for that loan. Okay. okay. And anyone that, that notices the deficit shouldn't be alarmed because I, I believe in our audit, didn't the auditor go through that it, it in statute it allows for a deficit as long as the funds are being going to be transferred yes if, from a, a grant program or yes like from that. a loan or a grant program or something like that um, in terms of the the street one that that has a deficit we are getting reimbursed for for street projects um, but it's it's actually currently just a timing difference of when it hit our accounting system. Mm -hmm. um, if we were to pull up this report today, it's it's not in a deficit mm -hmm. because of that transfer. So it's it's just sequencing of the report and the transfers. On the downtown tree replacement uh, fund 43, it does show we have a balance of fifteen thousand three hundred thirty-four dollars. Correct. There's some open tree grates. On West Main. Well, on, uh, let's see, it's Myrtle and 6th Street by Equity Bank. I noticed uh, during Niwala going down the street and with a hole in those, there, it's a hazard for pedestrians. So if we have money to put trees in or put something, we need to go ahead. I understand on West Main, you don't want to. Well, I, I know ahead. that there are, I think, two on West Main that are also <laughs> empty. Um, so those are potential ones as well. Yeah, we need to do something about the whole bit if we have funds available for trees during planting season, we need to go ahead. That's That's a really good point because if we are aware of this type of a uh, trip hazard, uh, we probably should take some kind of you know, intermediate action to, to either put a caution marker there or something like that so people don't inadvertently step in it. Instead of the orange cone, if some plywood or some metal plugs could be made that could be dropped in, it'd be more we had the yellow cones for quite a while yeah. and it's like we'll get it covered yeah thank you but i just i thought we had expended all the the funds for trees and when i saw that i thought well maybe we're we, missing the schedule or well that's why i wanted to bring it up we also use that fund for maintenance of of the trees so. yeah um on the the second page our our total debt uh, is the eight million nine hundred fifty four thousand six hundred one dollars from our bonds and our loan programs and our leases yes so our total from bonds are is about four point eight million and then we've got the leases and then <coughs> our loan programs are uh, just over three point four million totaling eight point nine million yeah so we've uh, decreased our our debt quite a bit in the last few years so because yes. it's um i forget what the the ratio is by statute we're we're under but we're we've made significant strides in that yes and if if you look on our website we have um an annual report that we prepare mm -hmm. every year that kind of takes a deeper look into our debt analysis and it actually shows which which debt is excluded from the debt calculation and things like that and it's it's on the finance page good that's the only question I had on the quarterly treasurer's report Commissioner Hayes do you I'm have good. questions you're good uh, I just have one question um, how are we notified of, of, of a tree that's no longer living is that the 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 business owner that the trees located in or do we do an inventory and say hey we've got five trees that they didn't make it they didn't make it out of the winter you know they're dead so well, where the, the park is down there on a bi-weekly basis okay assessing them and scott so he pretty well knows and 
Lacey and we also have TLC that helps us with downtown. So we got eyes and then, you know, Lacey keeps her ear to the ground too. So mm -hmm. okay. we try to monitor closely and stay on top of keeping the downtown clean. Okay. All right, great. Um, gentlemen, were there any questions for Lacey on the sales tax report? Uh, I, I did have a question on our sales tax receipts are, are going up, which with inflation, as prices go up, our sales tax goes up. So some of that is probably associated with the increased cost. I think I saw one report this morning of inflation in October was maybe 6.2%. But as, as we see in our household, our expenses going up, and how is that affecting our, our budget? Um, things that we're buying are, we're being affected the same way in some areas of, of increased costs for uh, uh, maintenance, uh, piping, fittings, and general things. Are, are we prepared or? I, I don't know if I'm, this is exactly the question, but I, so I can't tell you like for a certain category or, or type of, of commodity that we buy if we are seeing what percentage of price increases year to year. I haven't done that in depth of an analysis. Um, but in terms of the budget, I, I think I mentioned this at the budget, during the budget process that um, one of the ways that I'm, I'm actually really proud of, of city staff for, for accomplishing this is we have found efficiencies in our, in our buying power um, and in our processes to, to absorb a lot of those increases so that that, that is truly how the, the mill has stayed constant for six years um, because like you said we are also subject to inflation um, and we have just been fortunate enough to find efficiencies in our processes and and what we have to buy and when we have to buy it to absorb that and not um, push that burden back onto the budget well, I, does that answer your question it, it does because okay. that was brought up by the public you know they're, they're saying we need to cut and just knowing what we're going through at home, the city has the same thing. As prices go up, as gas goes up, it affects our budget. And how can we provide the same service at the same dollar when a dollar doesn't buy what it used to buy in, in quantity and, and looking that what were you doing to manage our city funds and you've already been implementing plans and uh, as, as we close out the year and start budgeting for an unknown 2023 that's going to be really difficult but no that was because well, you know you if you look at the increase of sales tax money and if everything was still at the same price it was in January, that would really be giving us a, a cushion that we could look at our revenue reducing the funds required to balance out the budget from other sources at Florham property tax. So as it's a it's a balancing act and that's that was the question I had to make sure that we're on track that we're not having to take drastic measures to cut programs or to cut expenses to handle inflation, but you have been monitoring the situation. Yes, we're, we are on track budget-wise. Great, thank you. <laughs> Commissioner Hayes. Uh, once again, good news, and uh, I'm glad to see the results. All right. Thank you. Lacey, and then we have the final assessed valuation. Yes. And I, let me look at it here. I see we estimated assessed valuation was 47, 
Yeah, David, 40, can you move the slide? Yeah, 47,000. Am I reading that right? 47 million. 47 million. I didn't think that sounded right when I looked at it and said it. 47 million, 662,132. And the final assessed valuation is 47 million, 593, 555. Yes, so our, assessed, our final assessed valuation um, <clears throat> went down $68,577 from the estimated valuation, mm -hmm. um, which is what we use to prepare our budget. Um, so the, the effect on that is a, we, we use that estimated number, um, so it's, it's your mill rate times valuation <laughs> equals levied dollars for our budget. Mm -hmm. Um, so being that we prepare the budget um, using an estimated number, um, when, when that number comes in as the final number, it changes the, the other variables in the equation. So um, at, <coughs> at budget, our estimated, I'll call it um, rate, using that number is 55.249, which yields a levy of 2,599,400 um, excuse me, $2,599,982 is what we built our budget on, that levy amount. Um, the actual rate, now that the actual valuation has come out, is um, 54.629, and that yields the exact same levied dollars that we built our budget on. Um, and to to just further explain that. Um, so I said that the, the difference between the estimated valuation and the final valuation is that $68,577. Right. Um, if you translate that into a mill, so the, the difference in the value of a mill, it is uh, $68.58. And so when you multiply that by the total mill difference, the, the change in mills from what we had a proposed budget versus the actual, it's a 0 0.079 mil change. Um, so you multiply that out into dollars and it's it's $5.42. So it's, it's virtually no change. Okay. And that's basically what we attempted to do is keep our levy rate <coughs> the same as we did the previous year. And with the revenue neutral rate, do I understand if we had not adopted that resolution to increase, then we would have had to stay at the 54.55 mil. Yes. And that, by doing that, then we would have to cut funds out of the budget somewhere to balance yes. the budget. So basically, that little minute increase of five dollars we had to approve increasing the revenue neutral rate so that we could levy the same rate in funds correct the the revenue neutral rate is an estimated rate it's what they think you <coughs> will need to levy as a rate to get the same dollar levy mm -hmm. um, now we're using the, we're still at the revenue neutral rate, it's just the actual revenue neutral rate mm -hmm. instead of the estimated rate. And had we not passed the revenue neutral rate, this year it's fine because it's, you know, it's five dollars, it wouldn't have been a, a major impact, um, but it's not uncommon for those valuations to be drastically different and we would not have had any protection from drast those drastic changes that could have come up from estimated to final valuation. That is the, the purpose of still approving the revenue neutral rate, yes. Because at the time we're working on the budget with that estimate, like you said, we don't know up, down, little or a lot. Yes. And, and basically though what we responded to the citizens' concerns that we kept the money that we were collecting through ad valorem tax at the same. Now, if their property tax goes up, 
that's because of their valuation of their property, which is beyond our control. Correct. Thank you, Lacey. Mm -hmm. All right, um, moving along. Um, gentlemen, we've all had a chance to review the city board minutes for the electrical board, housing authority, and rec commission. Um, item E, there's a reminder of a November 17th 2021 special commission meeting at uh, 10 a.m. and that is that's the that's a Wednesday right um, I, I don't keep track of dates anymore so hardly yeah Week from because today the Wednesday regular okay. commission meetings on the 18th and that's a Thursday okay and that's with the uh, realtor um, regarding building D, D. okay <clears throat> Well, what will be the format of the actual meeting? Uh, question asking or anything? It's basically like an that. interview, and you're interviewing them. Um, so, I mean, if you would like to send me some questions, I could put them together for you or whatever you would like. Is, is uh, the meeting going to be? chaired by the mayor or are you going to be conducting no the mayor would run the meeting okay it's basically just a dialogue with this um, real estate firm on whether you know any questions you have um, if you're comfortable with their process the questions you want to ask them prior to that meeting uh, we will give them a tour of the building mm -hmm right before that and then they'll come in and you guys can visit with them so if if we're going to ask questions if we could submit them to you so we'll all be aware of the question and not, and not do a redundant double question on the same topic or had, at least have some consistency that we can if one commissioner has a question we can ask in another direction to fill in the whole interview and and speaking with the city attorney the interview can be done in an executive session right. regarding trade secrets because okay. um whatever methods or whatever that they utilize it could be um you know not be advantageous for them to have that in an open right. session and is that correct jeff <coughs> I believe if they request it and, and they're concerned about it, yes. It'd okay. it have to be for their protection. Okay. 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 So, because um, I do have uh, had a couple of questions at least floating around in my head, and yeah, I would like to submit to you, and I encourage the fellow commissioners to do the same, and then if they're redundant, then you can narrow them down to a list of questions, and then we'll wherever that takes us, we'll, we'll follow off with it, mm -hmm. follow all, along with it. So I think that's a good idea to do. Okay. Okay. Um, you might also <laughs> copy David because I actually won't be here that week and that way he could put those together. Okay. Go ahead and copy me so I know what's going on, but if he could send them also today, copy to David, he can put that together. Okay, perfect. Well, you can do that. Okay, um, item seven, city manager comments. Kelly? I don't have anything, <clears throat> Mayor. All right, Commissioner. thank you. Thank you. Item eight, Commissioner comments. Commissioner Hayes, do you have any comments for tonight? I have none. <clears throat> Commissioner Kaflish? Yeah, I have a, a couple. Um, I know last year we had a, a, a session on uh, security and commission meetings, and I think it would be good to have a refresher, but also expand uh, the training from, I think primarily it was active shooter, but looking at, at some other possibilities of conflict with a, a citizen during a commission meeting, look at a policy so that all three commissioners and the staff and the city attorney sitting up here, the, there's some plan ahead of time on how to respond and how to handle that that should be included into the 
um, security training <clears throat> and Jerry Jerry I just want to make sure he's clear what you want okay. so that we don't have any misunderstandings sure I'd mentioned probably a refresher on the Alice training and then also expanding the training to other situations. So this, <clears throat> uh, I discussed this with you briefly the other day. Um, I have an email prepared, well, mostly prepared that I haven't sent to you yet to kind of update you on this topic. But uh, some of the specific thoughts that came to my mind are we, we talked in general when we trained, when uh, Sergeant Stafford trained us, we trained in general. Um, but it turns out we've learned recently that we probably need to have a specific plan for other types of scenarios. And so that's kind of the, the discussion that I was going to inform you about. So um, anyways, and I, I could go into some detail there, but probably shouldn't due to um, you know, security measures and Open Records Act uh, exceptions with that. But yes, I do have a plan that we're mocking up right now based off of those discussions that I've had. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's policies in place and you're trying to do, you're trying to do what's right when a citizen comes up here and has issues and has a complaint and I understand that and I know there's times I've given them a lot of leeway so I take responsibility maybe being a little bit too lenient in that way um, but I give them the benefit of doubt when they come forward that they're they may be very passionate about the issue that they're trying to explain to you but I also give them the the benefit that they're dealing in good faith and that this is somewhat controllable uh, the situation uh, here a while back was something that um, was really hard to deal with. Um, so it, it made me rethink about uh, whoever's sitting here in this spot, you know, how they would handle something like that. You know, in, in the meetings when you, when you have responses, uh, you know, the, the, the crowd is supposed to be non-participating, you know, they're not be hollering and clapping and and all this when they're up when someone's up there giving a presentation whether it's against taxes being raised or whatever and I get that um, but I'm also trying to give them the benefit of a doubt to where they have um, uh, the, the right to be heard but I want it to be in a responsible way uh, and one that recognizes that uh, that we're here to, we're here to help you know we're not, we're not your enemy we're here to help you uh, but as we give you the benefit and we give you that courtesy, we expect that courtesy back. So maybe that's something that that I need to do on the explaining when they do come up, and at least uh, um, enforce that point. So, but I'm curious to see your email on what you're proposing. Well, uh, yes. Yeah, so what um, what I'll propose is, or what I'll recommend to the city manager is that we schedule another uh, a recurring. Uh, regular I would say annually is a good plan uh, security meeting and we just meet and um, we can go over commission meeting policies um, because you know the police officers role in a commission meeting is different than out on the street and um, you know I'm not gonna go into that tonight but it's it's very different and that's because we need to be sensitive to people's um, right to free speech and an opportunity to address their elected representatives and so uh, in recognition of those kind of things um, I think we just need to have a meeting every year where we all just formally discuss uh, things like Commission meeting policies and what is expected by the Commission from the person serving in my role and then some specific uh, action plans and then we can repeat the training that we went through as well on an annual basis. I think that would have great value for all of us. I feel that <clears throat> the situations that we've had have been handled appropriately. I, I, I think the, the allowing the citizen to speak 
is is important. I, what I was concerned that everybody up here knows and works together to support the mayor or at what point that something gets to the situation where it needs to be addressed that everybody is prepared and they know how to handle from that that point forward so you know I don't think there's anything to fault for what's happened uh, I think there's probably been two or three occasions that we've we've had things happen and it it's worked but I, I think that if we're we're looking at being adequately prepared and extending uh, the sphere of protection f for more than just a commission then it's something that needs to be directed and and pr particularly you know as uh, as chief you're that's your business you need to be telling us how we can respond how we should and have some form of control not just winging it so I, I think the the only way to be prepared for an event is to practice yep. and the only way to practice is everybody know the the rules and how it's going to going to go down and I think as we see things changing in our world we need to be proactive not reactionary and this is an opportunity for us to take that to the next level to be better prepared because as we're prepared and control the situation we protect the citizens yep and so that was my only suggestion that we look at s scheduling uh, an event that you know we can go back over to, to be better prepared how soon would you want to schedule that well I think that's up to the the chief to get his ideas together you know he's got more things to do than just address this issue so I think he has to be com comfortable to the point to make the presentation so I, I would turn it to you Kelly to work with with the chief and and work it out before it comes to an actual uh, session for training I don't okay. you know sometimes if you if we set a timeline then it forces that you're not adequately repaired and we just waste time so I think that's up to to you two to work out what you see and get comfortable with it then come to the commission to set up a special uh, special meeting to go through it. And it these things are just evolving you know over the last year we've really uh, as for these meetings we've I think it's been about the last year I can't remember now, but it seems like it's been a relatively short time frame that we have really um, taken these things into consideration and started putting those plans into in the place to prepare the facility and all that kind of thing so this is just another step in making things better does this training also go out to other other boards that are established the only one I could think of would be like planning and zoning you know because they're you know they're their uses but you could have someone that would be combative and maybe wouldn't agree with what was going on at the meeting you know we see it at school board meetings uh, all over the country now safe a school board meetings used to be a safe meeting to go to um, it's not necessarily the case anymore so maybe that's something we might want to consider especially on those that the issues might be contentious or there might be hard feelings or disagreement on because they they can't see that why you didn't you know allow this to sure. go forward it's yeah. a thought because we don't want to escalate a situation but at what point do you draw resources in to where you you tap it or you catch it before it ignites I guess that's the the key well we're here to serve as directed so uh, we're happy to fill that role for anybody that any group okay. that we are directed to do that with we do it for church groups uh, employers uh, uh, school system this you know it's it's a program that we we provide as okay. part of our community outreach <clears throat> so yes we're happy to deliver that wherever it is needed and I think when you 
if you try and do one meeting with multiple boards, you kind of lose some effectiveness. Cause, you know, I'm, what I'm concerned about is if I'm sitting here, that I know what's going on, that I can vacate. You know, hey, you better outrun me. I'm not going to look back to help you. You know, it's one of those things that we have to know how we're going to respond, and where we're going to go, and what we're going to do. And you lose some of that effectiveness if you try and do multiple groups in in one format. That you know, we trained where our commission was meeting in in the veterans room. It's totally different here. So. There's new scenarios that have to be considered that you can't, planning and zoning, if they meet there, they need that training specific and you can't do all of it at once. And, you know, I think we could offer to extend if they're interested, but, you know, I, I think we should be focusing on protecting the commission and the staff that's sitting up here in a vulnerable situation now yeah. first <clears throat> that was my only comment all right I've made my comments um, concerning that also so um, that's my comments so we don't have any uh, public concerns tonight Nothing was brought up. Lacey, did you receive any public <coughs> concerns? No. Okay. Then at that point, we're moving to item 10, adjournment. I make a motion that we adjourn, and do I have a second? Second. <coughs> All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. <coughs>